All right, uh, good evening and welcome to the City of River Falls Municipal Utility Advisory Board meeting for Monday, April 18th, 2022. Uh, Lene, could we please have a roll call? Carol? Here. Morissette? Here. Spafford? Here. Toom? Here. Wells Meingold? Here. West Patel? All right. And now looking for approval on the minutes from the UAB meeting on February 21st. Can I get a motion? Second. Okay. Any discussion on the minutes? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are approved. Um, and this is a time for, uh, in our meeting for public comments. Any public comments at this time? Moving right along. Uh, next up, we have our uh, consent agenda. Moving on the consent agenda, uh, acknowledgement of the meeting uh, from the West Central Wisconsin Biosolids Facility Commission. February 17th and March 24th. Can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Any discussion on the consent agenda? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is approved. All right, and moving on to new business. Uh, item number three is the resolution recommending awarding a bid for the North Water Tower construction. Kellen, we do have about a 90 second presentation tonight just to go over this a little bit, and then we'll stand for questions as well. Uh, this project has been in the works uh, since 2009, actually, and we flirted with doing this project, completing this project in my nine years of tenure here as utility director. But the timing never was quite right. The necessity wasn't quite there. Uh, we were ready to pull the trigger two years ago and then COVID hit and then we hit the brakes on a bunch of stuff. And in hindsight, maybe, you know, dollars wise, maybe we should have done it then, but uh, we didn't and we waited and now we went out to bid. And as you can see in your packet, price of the project has increased uh, fairly substantially. And Todd is gonna go over that a little bit and has a lot to do with inflation and prices of steel. Um, but Todd, uh, just maybe briefly go over the project location, kind of a little bit, maybe just a little bit more of the background, and uh, we'll stand for questions. Can everybody see the screen? So I'll just give you a, a really quick rundown of what the project entails, and then we can talk, answer questions, and um, hopefully, I quote, and hopefully I can answer everything. So like Kevin said, this project has been talked about for a pretty long time. The, the ultimate water tower site location was at the top of this field just south of Highland Drive in the Whitetail Corporate Park. And the intent for this water tower is that the north zone booster station becomes how the water tower is filled. And... Um, the water tower will be filled by connecting a 16 inch water main to the existing 16 inch water main in Highland Drive that will be installed up the gravel roadway to this field. It's more of a, more of a field road than a gravel roadway, I should say. Um, it was installed for this communications tower that exists in that upper field. Uh, if you know people who are hike or, or bike the mountain bike trails, it's called the, the South Jeep Trail. So um, it's, it's the South Jeep Trail water main. Uh, the water tower will ultimately be a steel pedestal installed at the top of the field here. The water tower will significantly, well, after the next phase of the project is done, which is the, um, the North Utility Loop, which is water main north of Whitetail Corporate Park connecting over to Sterling Ponds underneath Highway 35 that will significantly increase water system reliability 
to the Sterling Ponds folks, the, both the corporate park and the residential park. And that will also significantly increase fire flows for everybody. And then installation of this water tower will allow us to install water main on Radio Road to ultimately serve the future Man Valley Corporate Park. Um, you know, the, the elephant in the room is that this water tower came in at 3.43 million and we had 2.5 or 2.6 budgeted in CIP. We've all seen the news and um, seen what fuel prices and steel prices have done in the past one to two years. And we've heard from the, the low bidder that their steel prices have doubled in the past two years, uh, which has really led to this significantly more expensive project than what was originally planned in the CIP. So with that, do you have any other questions? I've got a couple questions for you. Um, <clears throat> are we, um, so we talked about it, it's a steel pedestal. Is there a different design or is that probably the least expensive design? Has that been talked to with SEH? After we authorized um, design of a steel water tower back in July 21, we, we did not, we did not reevaluate any other other alternatives. This is what was was selected in the planning process and went went through the PSC and DNR approval processes. Um, and I, two other questions: Do they have a? Uh, does Phoenix have a that their quote is good for time frame? We did not get any stipulations about that. So so no. And then, um, have we talked, Kevin, about um, selling telecommunications opportunities off of our tower? Not a, we have no officially offered that, but we have quietly uh, acknowledged that other tower space is for lease. So it's a pretty good location on the north side of town. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do lease on Sycamore. I think we have a roughly $100,000 a year revenue to the water utility on Sycamore Tower for telecommunication leases. That's fairly substantial. And then there's a couple small antennas on Gulfview, mm -hmm. one of which is the city's. So we wouldn't, I'm not going to say we would not lease because I think we would entertain lease options and ideas. Did, did any of the bidders have a concern about our an, an aggressive schedule? Could that re increased our cost or I you know our substantial completion for this project and don't quote me but I, I don't think we even have substantial completion listed until summer 2023 so I don't feel that we put forth a very aggressive schedule mm -hmm. uh, the intent is that the water tower is fabricated and installed in 2022 and then it would sit over the winter because they probably wouldn't, it would probably be too cold to do the coatings. And then it would sit over the winter, sandblast it and apply the coatings in 2023. So I, you know, I, I don't, I, I, just, I just don't feel it's a very aggressive schedule. Okay. And, you know, we were, we thought we were doing great by being one of the first water towers out to bid in the state for 2022 construction season. And, uh, I guess other people may be learning something from us. Mm -hmm. That was our kernel of optimism we were looking for before yeah. the bid. The first one's out. Right. I know the business that I'm in, our escalation steel charges are way up, like we, like 50%. We, we have seen some correspondence from the, like the steel pipe suppliers and the valve suppliers saying that their, their quotes are only good for, for three days. So. Mm -hmm. They have to accommodate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do they feel confident that everything will stay on schedule? I mean, it seems like things are changing on the daily. And so if we get too far down the road and then they just can't get supplies, is that? You know, short of um, like a, a force majeure situation, I our contract has the substantial completion dates after which there are some liquidated damages that 
we, we could apply if, if it was causing actual financial hardship for the city. So no, we have not heard any correspondence from the contractor that they feel that they would not be able to meet substantial or final completion dates listed in the project manual. And for the Man Valley um, corporate park that will be, um, this is pretty substantial in, in bringing everything else to fruition out there, that, correct? That is, that is accurate. Okay. Well, <clears throat> since this is certainly over what was budgeted, which is always uh, a little disappointing, but I mean, I assume we have ways that we can we, we can come up with the additional dollars without um, too much hardship, or how are we going to do? How are we going to come up with the additional dollars? Is we going to have to postpone something else, or any idea? Just That's a good question. So why don't you come forward, Josh? Josh and I did talk about this, and I said to Josh when I went into his office about 10 minutes after the bid opening, I said, can we afford it? So Josh gets on his spreadsheets, and uh, he plays it out, and, you know, it'll be a bigger bond issue, issuance, uh, that's for certain. And then Josh did play this out into the future, and Josh, you want to let, it, let the utility advisory board know your results. Yeah, so as you may recall, when we talked about year-end fiscal results a couple months ago now, I believe, we talked about the two policy frameworks. We kind of evaluate the utility, and we had the kind of the cash uh, policy framework, and then we had the debt coverage framework. And so updating the uh, debt issuance from the 2.6 roughly to the 3.4, um, we, we don't anticipate falling out of compliance with either of those um, policies where, you know, we will likely have, I think, uh, a much more deliberate conversation down the road is when it comes to the Man Valley development, um, knowing what we know now about the pricing coming back the way it is. Um, it's likely that when we're talking about developing Man Valley and, and more utility costs for that, we'll probably have a, a conversation about options and phasing and, and how we may approach that. Um, within our existing CIP, for the utility over the next five years, there there is about a, a million dollars in in one time use of utility cash contemplated for other capital projects that we could look to reduce in scope, delay, et cetera, if absolutely necessary to facilitate this. But I I don't expect that that's going to be necessary. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Thanks. I've got maybe two questions. Is there a futures market for steel? I mean, there is one. What is it still short and going down in price? I don't know. I can think of what, what exactly would happen if we did delay it. And what do you have a problem with? If, if we delayed this project, it would likely cause a domino effect that would delay the Man Valley corporate park development. Have you started construction delayed and you are actually serving with the civil yeah. Thank, Thank you. Is, is that it kill, still could start construction, right? But we'd have to have the tower up before the first tenant needed water. Correct. So the tenant would have to buy a lot, design a building, construct the building. So there's a time frame there. I thought maybe that could be used to wait possibly See if prices went down, but I'm just suggesting. I guess. Yeah, I, I wish I knew. I wish I knew where prices were were going to go for everything in the next six months to three years. Well, I think it's safe to say that uh, I mean there there's a rather large infrastructure federal bill that was passed that there's going to be. Uh, fairly submit significant amount of construction uh, funded in the next few years that uh, it's unlikely that uh, things are going to change for lower costs. You know, I mean, it's not my business to, to predict, predict those sorts of things, but uh, um, it, it would seem that there probably will be a lot of a lot of money available in the next few years for uh, that will be competing for steel and other commodities. 
the, uh, the the bipartisan infrastructure law has funneled a lot of money into public infrastructure. That was, I think that was passed in December 2021. And I don't know the exact dollar figures, but it is putting a lot of money into our construction economy and whether or not our contractors can even get that work done is one of the one of the concerns. Any other questions? Could could you or Kevin just explain the the quote in our in our packet? It was disappointing but not surprising. Could you just share a little bit about that? Yeah, I can. I'll just speak to that, Todd. I think the disappointment part comes from our two point six million dollar engineering estimate from our consultant um, who we, I mean, that was probably a six month old quote. They did up it from two one to two six, but it wasn't freshened from two six up. And we've had casual conversations and they think they still felt comfortable with that, but it was kind of a wait and see because they were not even sure they had been something like this. So yeah, there was just, that's where the disappointment came, came through. But then the not surprising part is when we all see the inflation reports and we know the prices of steel. Right. Um, I do owe Todd a cup of coffee because I took the under on the estimate, which is a. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a, a gimme. And uh, yeah. so, no, we weren't surprised, I think, just because of the inflation. I expected that was going to be your answer. I just thought it'd be yeah. good for That's the good. public yeah. to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Todd. Thank you. All right, so I am looking for a motion to adopt a resolution recommending that the UAB advise City Council to award the contract for construction of the North Water Tower to Phoenix Fabricators and Erectors, LLC. I move approval of the resolution. I'll second it. We just discussed it a lot, but any further discussion? Mm -mm. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Resolution passes. Uh, moving on to reports. Yeah, I have on uh, number four, upcoming project report. I know there's been a little bit of interest about looking into the future a little bit, and Todd and I and our, our group internally meet about every other week or every three weeks to discuss upcoming projects. So I took some of those off the list, and I'm going to present those to you tonight. Take about maybe three to five minutes. Oh, I gotta be a happy clicker here, hold on. Is it down here already, already open? Ah, there we go. And now switch screens. Uh, display settings, swap presentation. How about right there? All right. So soon, just take a couple minutes here to talk about what we're thinking about as utility and as a city with upcoming projects. It's also good for you folks to know as you see construction happening around town, you go, oh, I heard of that. That's what they were talking about. So Man Valley Corporate Park, <clears throat> Radio Road, um, water. So you have had, there has been inquiries when somebody, some might say serious inquiries about developing in Man Valley Corporate Park and our necessity to get the water tower built and water down Radio Road. And we're feeling some urgency internally to potentially meet potential developers' requests out in Man Valley. Those, are, um, those requests are, are asked not to be shared publicly at this point in time for their company's reasons, but I'll just tell you that there are people inquiring seriously about Man Valley. So, um, and that's why we feel some urgency to get the water tower built, the north uh, water and sewer looping completed out to the first roundabout, and then we'll have to take water down Radio Road, probably past the University Farm, which we've been in some communications with about water and sewer out there, which we're interested in maybe swapping easements for service, which is 
a good win-win for both. And then out demand Valley Corporate Park. So keep your eyes open. Um, you know now as much as we know internally, um, there's interest. Can't share the specific interest, but there is interest that would uh, involve utilities, so. How many more breweries? <laughs> this, 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 uh, well, I mean, I think I can say that the interest was not a brewery, so. <laughs> I think that's fair. Um, North Water Tower, we just talked about that. So that's happening, uh, you know, 500,000 gallons, substantial project. Man Valley Lift Station relocation. So currently, our, we have a lift station that is right into your entrance into DeSanctis Park. So when you drive into DeSanctis Park, you, it's below ground, so you might see some pipe sticking out of the ground. Um, that is a little, we're gonna be re relocating that uh, west out on Division Street towards Man Valley. Again, that's gonna be a contingent upon the interest in any project moving ahead in Man Valley, but we are poised and ready to potentially move our lift station from our sewer lift station from DeSanctis Park <clears throat> out towards Man Valley and Division Street. That could be happening as early as mid next year. Again, that's project dependent and what happens out in Man Valley. So be, be ready for that one should anything go. Uh, then we, so we talked about the North Extension Looping Project for water and sewer. That you'll probably be seeing in six months as well. That's going to follow right on the heels of the water tower. So when the water tower is complete, it'll be two or three months after that. Hopefully we can get the north looping done as well. And that will work in uh, conjunction with the north water tower to supply Sterling Ponds with a little more pressure in Sterling Ponds Corporate Park. <clears throat> so that'll be happening. Be looking for that relatively soon again in the next six months, most likely, as we have SCH uh, working on that right now. North Interceptor, that's in process, and Todd is overseeing that project, and <clears throat> I'll just say it's a mess. It's muddy, it's dirty, it's, it's the worst weather we've seen in the springtime in a long time, and our contractor is having to endure that. It's mud, it's clay, it's messy and hard. So am I summarizing that correctly? <clears throat> They're getting it done, but it's, it's, it's a slog in the slog, so that's happening. Cemetery road reconstruction, some of you may be aware that that was in front of the high school from Main Street out to the roundabout, which I think is gonna be modified a little bit down Cemetery Road. That was gonna be done last year and they paused that and they're bringing that back and it's gonna start as soon as the high school is out, I believe in, I think early June. Is that accurate too, Todd, early June of May? You want to give the timing on Cemetery Road? Yeah, it's a Cemetery Road project. Um, it's important to note that this is not a city project. Not a this city is a project. State-let project because that's Highway 29. They are intending to start after school gets out and finish before school, school starts. starts. Yeah, and that I, I popped up here. This was an interesting one too because they did cancel the project in 2020, and they rebid it, looking for better pricing, and they did not get better. Yeah, so, S similar. Yeah, I, it, it, it did come in similarly priced to their, their original bid. Mm -hmm. I had that on here because you will see construction going on. You'll wonder what that's about. Uh, it did affect electric a little bit already on their piece that went uh, uh, on the Main Street portion. We had to re re relocate some poles and whatnot. But that's not, this is not a big one for utilities, but it's a big one for impacts on travel and, and whatnot down that area. So that's, that's why I bring that up. And, it's a state project. Powell Avenue Bridge, another one that Todd's working on. There's, you may have seen some cones out there on our Powell Avenue Bridge. You can actually see through the bridge into the water in a few spots. And that is due for reconstruction in 2023. So be looking for that project as well. There'll be some temporary rerouting on that Powell Avenue Bridge, but that is gonna be getting done within the next 12 months. I'm a 12 to 24 months. Yeah. Funding. Yeah. So, yeah, it's an 80-20 DOT grant. You want to talk about a bit more about that to help with that? Yeah, project? it's it's a 80-20 STP um, local bridge grant through the DOT. So it's federal dollars. Um, 
federal dollars pay for 80% of it. Local match is 20%. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not a complete bridge reconstruction project. It's a bridge bridge deck replacement project mm -hmm. that currently slated. We were notified that we were awarded the grant um, just a couple weeks ago. Our next step will be to enter into a state municipal agreement with the DOT, and then uh, then they'll program it for bidding. And they're currently programming it to be bid early 2023 and completed in 2023, but there is a chance that could be 2024, um, depending on how long it takes to work through the DOT approval and design process. When you stay up here, we talk about it. Let's talk about Wasson Lane together. The roundabout sure. at Wasson Lane. This is the location of the old Moody's property in the corner of Cascade in Wasson Lane. There'll be a roundabout going in there, and that will affect some utilities there as we'll be putting some water underneath that as well, I believe. Yeah, we haven't gotten to that level of detail during the design for the design yet. We're in concept at the concept plan level. This was the Wasson Lane, South Wasson Lane reconstruction was also a DOT uh, SDP 8020 grant. This work is being done, the design work is being done by Strand Engineers out of Madison, Wisconsin, and will include a roundabout at the, um, at the Cascade and Wasson intersection, mm -hmm. and then urbanization of the entire South Wasson <laughs> Lane all the way down to Cemetery Road. And by urbanization, I mean um, going from a, a rural ditch section to an urban curb and gutter section, typical of a, a, a city street. 2023, 2024? 2023 design, 2024 construction. So that will affect the university as well, traffic. Yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be an impactful project, mm -hmm. both negatively during construction and positively when it's done. If you could avoid when they move in, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So then the last one that I have on here is the IFC Troy Street expansion for water, sewer, and some electric out there. That's happening. So That's happening. We right now, this is uh, in the River Falls Industrial Park, or some would call it the original industrial park, uh, the oldest industrial park. Go ahead. You're kind of overseeing that project as well, but it's happening right now. Yeah, clearing, <clears throat> clearing and grubbing began this week. We expect to see some water main installation start next week. Mm -hmm. It's a relatively small project, but for a small project, it does have some complexities. Uh, with that, we expect it to only last about four weeks. So minimal disruption to the uh, community. And the impetus of this project, if you can remember, was we had a water line kind of zigzagging through several properties and we're remo removing that and putting it out where it's not interfering with potential developable areas. So those are the big ones I had on my list. Am I missing anything, Don? Um, that you wanted to go, oh my gosh, well, I forgot. No. Um, if anybody has any North Interceptor questions, uh, feel free to ask. Yeah. I, um, it, it is, Kevin said, it is going very slowly due to the wet spring, high groundwater conditions. Um, none of this was unexpected from our contractor, but you know they kind of hoped for the best, but prepared for the worst. They're continuing to make progress. So I'm confident we'll mm -hmm. we'll get it done. So maybe one I'll add on there is some sewer lining. So from just this side of Division Street on our north interceptor, we'll be lining from there up to where this new project ends. So we will have new north interceptor from where the existing lift station is, up by the bridge, all the way. Down now, all almost, down. To, yeah, almost, almost, right almost, to almost to, to the treatment plant. So yeah, it's uh, the the pipe from basically the Kinnickinnick River to right about here actually is fifty year old clay pipe, and it's in groundwater most of the year, and it's leaky. So we're treating a lot of clean, clean groundwater at our waste treatment plant until we get that until we get that lined. Mm -hmm. So that'll be a good piece to have out of the way. That's a big expense, but it is the main backbone of the north side of town for our sewer system. So, yeah, you'll see that lining project, and we're just waiting on some wetland permitting, just the other side of Division Street here to finish that lining project. Still waiting on that. So, very good. Any questions about projects? Is, is there any update, uh, Kevin, switching gears on the hydros or any <clears throat> movement there? <clears throat> sure. Um, yeah, I get. I have that one. So we did get our our grant application submitted to the 
uh, Wisconsin DNR million dollar uh, grant application. Uh, you guys know the, the lower hydro has been turned over from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission to the Wisconsin DNR for their ju jurisdiction. Hopefully we'll hear on that grant application in late May, I believe they said. So uh, we have our fingers crossed there. They had a couple questions on the grant application, I think three. Two of them we have answered and the third one is regarding some square footage of property owners, which is the city adjacent to Powell Falls Dam and we're having a title company review that and I'm hoping we hear back by tomorrow on that. So other than that, there was on that long application, those are the only, only three questions we had. So we feel, we feel confident in our application and uh, we're hoping that that does come through. Thank you. That's where that's at. Um, I know Kellen always asked you about funding. We will be invoicing the KCC for one half of the decommissioning plan that they committed to. It's about fi roughly $56,000 that we'll be invoicing them for. Um, Duke Welter did indicate to me late last week that uh, cap to wish, is that the, how you say that? F uh, Trout Group, that they have indicated a $100,000 contribution verbally, so well, nothing in writing, but he said there was interest in that. So that was also positive news, so I thought I would share that as well. So I have for right now. Um, just looking at all the different projects and this, that, and the other, and driving past and seeing all of the new construction that's going in out at Sterling Ponds and everything else. I guess where is the next round of like residential development happening? And then is the current infrastructure set up to support that development? Or will we be revisiting like, well, we need to do this on the west end and we need to do this on the east end or the south end or, does that make sense? Yes, it does. So I, I'll, I'll talk about the ones that are in planning review right now since they're public. And I think one you can be looking for is uh, the one on, on uh, Apollo Road as you head down towards the wastewater treatment plant right across the road from the solar village there. Eco, honestly, Eco village or solar village? Eco Village, right across here from East Eco Village, um, that open field there is 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 uh, up through planning process for some development there. And yes, we are prepared to serve that, and we have uh, we have adequate infrastructure to serve that. So I'd say be looking for that one potentially yet in 23. That one's out there in the public. What else is public right now that I can share? Yeah. Process to bring in new homes. You know, if we're going to annex new new land outside the city and become residential or, or whatever, um, our city ordinance requires us to do what's called a capital cost study. So we need to evaluate what's going to be there and what the costs would be for our infrastructure to to handle that increased load. So if we're going to add 300 homes and we would need to upsize the water main from a I'm just making things up here from an eight inch to a 12 inch water main that would be identified in the capital cost study. And those costs would come back, those costs would be paid back to the city through the, through the um, development process and the annexation process. So I just gotta be, I have to be careful because I believe the one I mentioned is far enough down the road that has been in the public conversations, but I wanna be careful not to say something that I don't, but there are a couple other people poking around and when it gets to development review and planning review, um, we'll, we'll know more about that. But I just wanna be careful not to say something. But there are several, I mean, we know the housing demand is up and I think builders are responding and they are looking around to do more. But yes, we always are analyzing our infrastructure and where it is and where they're locating, how the annexations happen. Uh, we want clean annexations for the electric utility's sake to make sure that we can serve them. So we, I really do a lot of planning around that as well. So. And then how does the biosolids plant potentially fit into all of this, I guess, then too? Because that is another potential. It is. So I think I'm going to come to you next month with a proposal of what we should be doing at West Central Biosolids. And again, I talked to Josh about that, and we did a, we've run the numbers. And again, because we have a, some substantial debt coming off the books over the next four or five years, uh, the biosolid does 
in our according to our, our current estimates of cost does fit into our plan without uh, a negative hit to the to the wastewater utility immediately. So that's a positive as well. And with all of the projects that were listed and not listed that we sort of talked yeah. about off, yeah. you know, right off, you know, record, off yeah. the screen and yeah. um, I mean. Are there potential rate hikes or fees or something like that that might be coming down the pipe? No pun intended. No, you know, right, right, right. You know, um, just, there's no rate hike, no rate increases planned today. Uh, we continually assess that. I mean, water has been since 2014 or 15, 15 already. So boy, that's been seven years ready for water. And we always have the opportunity with water to do an abbreviated rate case, a fast rate case, but the problem was we were making a greater than a 6% return that was going back into the utility, so we were not eligible for that expedited rate case. Uh, even today, I think our position is solid in water today. Um, we did chat briefly about that, and you know, the inflationary costs aren't going to, going to get passed along to our municipal customers in the near future. But I would imagine in the next three to five years, inflationary costs are going to put pressure on labor, equipment, materials that will eventually trickle down to a rate increase. I mean, just on, on first blush. But there is no immediate need, Kellen, for a rate increase. And we have not examined that today. And we don't need that today. Josh, am I speaking out of school on that or am I accurate? Mm -hmm. On it is the PSC. It is it is driven by formula. So um, you know, right now we're not contemplating one um, within the next few years. Certainly, again, as we start to talk Man Valley and larger development down the road, um, that that may just be an option we have to examine. Um, but you know, essentially, what the state does, um, kind of at the forty thousand foot level, is they look at your net operating income, and that in any one year. They, they try to target 6% in terms of what your net operating income is as a percentage of your, your overall assets of the utility. So if we exceed that, we're not able to increase our rates. Um, so that, that would be sort of the step two process. Step one is we might have some indication internally looking at our numbers that it may be time to go, but that doesn't mean that, that when we go to the state and the PSC and talk to them that they'll allow it, frankly. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that question is really just because everything is going up. Like, if we don't necessarily want to hit our rate payers with an unnecessary rate hike just because we have all these really pretty projects planned. Um, I mean, River Falls is a, a really nice place to live, but it's also a really expensive place to live. So, and and our models um, they they lean conservative. So certainly, you know, when when we when we say that. Yeah, well, you know, the $800,000 in additional debt, we can accommodate that. The, the model we're kind of running through is already an intentionally conservative one. Um, so I mentioned earlier, there is the option of that million dollars in, in planned use of cash that we could delay or um, pare down in scope to, to allow for more liquidity within the utility. Um, but with an already conservative model indicating that we'll likely be okay, I just, I don't see that being necessary. And, we may find that it, it would be similar with, with the need for rate increases down the road also. Okay. And that was a consideration. When we look, you know, you'll hear more next month about West Central Biosolids and our assumptions, but Josh and I talked pretty extensively about potential rate impacts and when and how and if. And I mean, we, I think we both feel pretty comfortable that we're on pretty solid ground, even with that potential expenditure, considering our offset expenditure to West Central some of the debt being retired, we are not in that bad of a position, even though it would seem like a pretty big capital outlay for a, for a six and a half million dollar project. Things are being retired and some of the expenses are just being switched. So. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that kind of gives you a good snapshot of what's going on. But to your point, Kellen, there's a lot going on. Yeah. A lot going on. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, finance report. After we Josh. just talked about finances. Yeah. 
well, after a pretty heavy conversation on projects and stuff, the, uh, the financial report from a financial perspective is fairly unremarkable this time around. So our year-to-date revenues within the electric fund are $4 million. Expenses are 3.7. Water fund year-to-date revenues are $479,000. Expenses are $500,000. Year-to-date revenues in the sewer fund are $873,000. Expenses are $640,000. Stormwater fund year-to-date revenues are $147,000. Expenses are at $127,000. I do just want to briefly touch on the water fund. Um, as the report suggests, the expenses year-to-date exceed the revenues. That's This time of year, that's, that's actually not terribly uncommon. Um, I went and looked back to 2017 at the April report that's been provided to the board, and literally half of the time, um, we had this situation occur. It just, again, has to do, and I think we talked about this a little bit, the, the um, pr yeah, the seasonality, when we touched on the the, fis the prior year fiscal summary report, um, there was some discussion during that as well about seasonality. So that's what we're seeing here too with the water fund as we get into the summer months and we start to see more water usage, that, that picture there begins to change. So again, since 2017, three of three of those years, we've had similar year-to-date results for April is what we have now. Um, so when it comes to accounts outstanding and um, billing receivables, uh, for all funds, we're at $1.8 million. Of that total, $144,900 is 31 or more days past due. And when you compare that to the prior year, um, March 31st, 2021 period, or we're about the same there. So again, that is more seasonal fluctuation. Moratorium um, is ending, and so you start to see some of that work itself out. Um, and then on that that page 17 of the packet, when I kind of mentioned the, the unremarkable nature here of this one, you can see where across all of our utilities, um, we're, we're more or less tracking along with prior years, the, the exception there being electric utility um, revenues and expenses uh, do continue that increasing trend, but that's been consistent for the past few years. Um, with that, I will take any questions. So we have excess money. Where is it kept? Where is the money stored or saved at? Yeah. So um, I guess for the for the city, Security Financial Bank is our is our holder of money. We do um so we call it we kind of roll our cash and investments up into exactly that on the balance sheet cash and investments. So we've got um some of our invested money. Uh, we have Prudent Man Advisors is their name. They are our investing advisor. Um, they've got some parameters set forth in city policy for kind of the the types of investments they can put it in, um, average maturity, things like that. So we have cash that's invested through them. We also have cash that's with the state of Wisconsin local government investment pool. Um, that can be drawn on. It's pretty liquid, accessible if we need it. And then we do have some amount of money that's in cash held by Security Financial Bank. So um, we, we do have policy. I, I don't have it off the top of my head, um, point by point, but we do have policy that directs where our, our cash and investments are um, placed and kind of the, the allocation of that. Other questions? Nope. Uh, utility dashboards. Yeah, I do have uh, one thing I want to, a couple things I want to go over, but one, I'm going to get a, stay on this right now about rates and uh, the impact to our customers. So I'm going to hand, this is an expanded version of what you have in your pack. Rate comparison sheet, and I've added a couple other utilities in here, some co-ops. I didn't, we were just working these numbers, and it's not quite as robust as uh, what you have in your packet. But it's the two yellow ones that I've added, and two local co ops that you might want to know that. The rest of them are the investor owned utilities around the state and how they compare. And then the two I added are the two local co ops. But <clears throat> the, there's some highlights here, and Kellen's saying, well, our rates were expensive and whatnot. An average residential, an average residential customer in River Falls uses about 750 kilowatt hours a month, and we are about 28 and a half percent more affordable than We Energies. 
11.9% less than Wisconsin Public Service, 16.2% less than Alliant, 16.5% less than Excel Energy, and 31.9% less than MG&E. And if you look at the co-ops, um, you know, St. Croix Electric, we're about 50 bucks cheaper. Looks like those numbers are a little rougher. Mike Noreen is working on those, so. Uh, you can see, I mean, we're very competitive. If you, again, I want, one of the thing I, the thing I like in here is River Falls, we're the last ones under $100 on average, $97.43, so everybody else is over 100 other utilities, sometimes though, some of the investor owns put a little more burden on residential customers and a little less on commercial customers. Uh, that's reflected down below, though we still are, even on our commercial rates, we are beating most of the investor owns as well on our rate structures. So you look at that and you know, I guess we have to feel pretty good about ourselves that we're, we are holding our costs down to our, to our customers and I, you know, you don't want to put us up there too high and tout it too much, but you know, when times aren't good, we get a lot of criticism. And I think right now we're kind of in a sweet spot where we WPPI energy WPPI energy's done a nice job managing our wholesale energy costs. And it's now that plan is not being reflected here. So um, don't be afraid to share that with your neighbors. I'm not gonna put it in the paper, but uh, I think it's something that is good to have in our toolbox. And when someone asks you about our rates, you can say, well, Excel Energy is for an average residential customer is about 16% higher. Since there's so much, um, uh, so much of the town is participating in the green energy blocks too. Is there any like how does that play into this? Does that help keep our costs lower than everybody else, or is it just? It doesn't. It doesn't really help keep costs lower. Um, and one thing I like about the green energy block program that it's not reflected in the rates because that's a 100% volunteer program. Right. which is kind of nice if you want to participate, which about 16.5% of our customers do, or around 16%. Um, that's all voluntary, but it doesn't have, that has impacts more on the greenhouse gases than it does because we're investing that into renewable energy, um, but doesn't really impact rates per se. <clears throat> Mark? Does this, does this reflect, how do we reflect in Wisconsin in general? I mean, can we... Yeah, so the, all these ones you see here are all Wisconsin utilities. So this is all of Wisconsin? This is, well, this is, yeah, so We Energies, Wisconsin Public Service, Line Energy, XL Energy, and Madison Gas and Electric. These are the investor owns in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. Okay. In, the investor owns in Wisconsin. The other municipals that we're part of the, of the 51 city consortium with WPPI, WPPI Energy, we're all within a bandwidth of a cent or a okay. cent and a half. All right. I just missed that part of this was Wisconsin. Yeah, so, sorry. I mean, there's a little bit of variance in the in our group, but it's not a wide at all. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty narrow band. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I wanted to point out. Um, oh, I know I was going to say. So today is actually National Line Person Day. We have linemen, so we have a National Lineman Day. So mm -hmm. thank the linemen today. I brought them some donuts this morning and. Uh, Want to remind everybody, we got we did get this statistic from American Public Power Association. The average outage time for uh, you all U.S. electric utilities average outage outage time is 136 minutes per year. Last year in River Falls, the average outage time was 14.47 minutes. So something else we can be proud of. Uh, it's pretty amazing. That's the squirrels right there. We get on those pretty quickly. So. Average out of time is a little over two hours. We're just under 15 minutes. So some do actually last longer, but that's our average out of time in 2021. So we're pretty proud of that. Um, we got the nice plaque I gave to, to the guys, Certificate of Excellence and Reliability. May 18th, I want to invite you if you would like to go. So Scott Moore went last time, but West Central Wisconsin Biosolids is having a meeting over in Baldwin at the Phoenix Event Center in Baldwin. I'll do an email invite to you as well, but I'll verbally tell you it's at 6 o'clock on May 18th, and they're going to go over some of the upcoming projects that they're going to have. The, the first one is their Project Point Five, which is about a $3.5 million project, of which we did secure the $1.6 million federal money 
that came through a last minute that we're when we get the check, we'll be turning over to West Central for that project. So that will defray their $3.5 million project by 1.6 million. Then they're gonna use 1 million of their reserve money. So they have a pretty affordable project at about a million dollars. <coughs> that's, that's really good for them. What else am I forgetting, Renee? Anything else that I was gonna hit on? I think, I think that's, that's really it, so big thing. Oh yeah, I was gonna to mention too, uh, Dean Seamuth is here and uh, Dean is now our, our full-time uh, water and wastewater superintendent. So he was interim and this last week we uh, uh, signed Dean our full-time water and wastewater superintendent. We're really glad to have him. Dean's done a great job, so glad to have him. Any other questions or comments or concerns? Oh yeah, I can mention the field trip. I know a couple people went on that. Adam and, and Tim went down. They got on. We got on the bus and we went down to Wisconsin Dells to look at their biosolids facility. And I don't really want to speak for Adam and Tim, but I'll say personally, I was impressed. It's kind of like you know, go to the car lot and you think you're going to buy a Chevy, and then you drove a Cadillac down there. That thing was really clean. Adam, do you want to expound on that, or I'll let you? Yeah, I was. I was just going to say, Kevin had stars in his eyes right as we pulled into the facility. He kept talking about how how clean it was, how nice it was. I think all of us who were who were in tow were really taken aback at how tight the operation was. Um, I know that they went several degrees beyond, I think, what we're planning here in, in River Falls, but just to see the potential of, of what they have, how it's used, how it's processed, um, was, was pretty eye-opening. Um, I think one of the more interesting points about it and kind of the reason why we picked, well, I believe why we picked Wisconsin Dells was not just because it was one of the closest, but because it fit uh, the use case for uh, similar to River Falls for their off season. So I think that they had to manage something like three times the amount of wastewater in the summertime because it's a vacation destination, but in their off season, it most closely mirrors River Falls consistent annual use. Um, yeah, it was it was an it was an impressive impressive group of people, impressive facility, really really nice. Mm -hmm. Anything to add, Tim? Uh, no, I other than I mean I think the process is pretty dialed in. Uh, it, it it looks pretty uh, uh, dependable what they've got, and that so we wouldn't be going out on a limb that way. I don't believe. Um, it's just like anything else, like we talked about with Water Tower. Who knows what costs are going to be doing, but the West Central Biocide project will, ha will be under the same pressures for uh, any inflation, what have you. So um, whether we go on our own or stay with them, I mean, it, it, it probably does look like we're, we're going to be increasing some costs, but it's just one of those things we have to do to, to keep up with the times and uh, you know, maintain uh, a, a good option for uh, handling our sludge. So yeah, so I'm really preparing for next month's meeting. It's a culmination of three to four years of planning for the recommendation. I'm going over the numbers one more time. I'm gonna be meeting with Strand and going over the project one more time. Um, triple, quadruple check the costs. I'm not going to be afraid to get other consultants ideas and estimates. So I really want to get this right and I don't want surprises down the road. So doing all I can to try to ensure that what I present next month is going to be as tight as I can get it. Where, where I were, Kevin, they, um, I was um, introduced to, uh, through an email um, today actually. Um, they're getting a $68 million grant for um, charging stations as the city. I know, I think I brought this up a while back, but I, it's real curious to me. So We haven't uh, locally and personally done, but I know WPPI is always going out for those grants to share with their member community. So a lot of that work, behind the scenes work in securing funding is done through WPPI which then starts programs to help communities, oh. which we are definitely on the short list for. So, thanks. That's all I have today. Any other questions? Oh, I just thought of one. 
We're bringing the cookout back this summer, right? We're going to bring the cookout back, and we're going to actually do it a little, up a little bit. So um, right out front here, it's going to be the cookout in front here. And, you know, it's been a while, Kellen, but you still hold the crown for the uh, best corn swapper we've ever had. <laughs> it was good. That was a good day. Born and raised in Iowa. It just comes with the territory. You look so. like a natural. So what we're going to do is we've talked to the Girards, and they're going to let us use their little field here just off of our our area, and then I think we're going to have a band play, and we're going to do a four to six o'clock event too, so a little more oriented towards maybe bringing some family or whatever down, so rather than the midday that we've done, so we are planning on more people. We've typically had just under a thousand. We are guessing probably a 1,500 type crowd now at a four to six type event uh, with a, a little more robust live music and stuff for the kids. So, yeah, that's going to be, I think, August 18th is our penciled-in date. Okay. So. Oh, electronics turned on? Did I miss that? Electronics cleanup, Kevin, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, we do electronics cleanup this Saturday uh, down at our um, city garage at 950 Benson Street. Entry for that will be down Quarry Road. And then down, if I'm saying, is it Benson? Is what I'm saying? Ben, yeah, nine, Benson Street, yes. I always get Apollo and Benson mixed up because I'm going down this way. So, yeah, so you go down past Quick Trip down Quarry Road, take a right on Benson, and get in line for electronic recycling this Saturday. I think it's 8 to 1. Yeah, one time. The spirit of the event is a one time trip with a big car load, or maybe you could pick up truck load, but the spirit of the event isn't to bring a semi load down there. So not that we're saying you can't, but that's not the spirit of the event, is to empty out your garage, your basement, and bring your monitors and whatnot down there, or vacuum cleaners or whatever you might have. So Saturday, electronic recycling, free event. Bring your uh, utility bill so we know you're a paying utility customer and are eligible for the event. Okay, I think we just about covered it. I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. We're adjourned. Thanks.